percent. Anyway, yeah. Uh, I'll park again in here, I think, and then I'll go in there because there used to be pygmies in there. If you look at the old footage that Donnie and I are walking in there, so uh, yeah, I'm going out for now. Might as well make it one clip. It's only going to be a short one, a yes, no, uh, sort of, are they still there, sort of thing. We couldn't find them before, but they might be more obvious now. But, uh, oh, you like your signage, do you? Okay, well, give you a bit of signage. There you go, a bit of signage for you. And, uh, if I remember rightly, it's well, there was a sort of similar sort of divide thing in here, but not you know not a gouge sort of thing in here. And you used to come up to it, and from that point onwards, that's where you'd find the uh, pygmies. Well, there's some glandulicious down there. That's something, you know, down there for you. They could look quite cute in that little cute stage at the moment. Oh, here we go. This is what I was talking about. Oh, it has gouged out now. Excuse me, I'm hungry. <laughs> Been working hard for you. Getting you the footage, the shots you all want. Uh, yeah, so from here on, and they're everywhere, aren't they? When we cross over, we if they're still here, we should find the occasional one. And then that will lead us back to a colony or something, if we're lucky, if they're still here. They haven't been totally burnt out or something. But, uh, as I say, the glitz are everywhere. That's why I say it's, it's the most common sundew in southern Australia. That's the, that's the ironic thing. Is no one would, would, would believe me about its tentacles moving faster than the eye could see because, oh, it, it grows everywhere. If it, it was that amazing, someone else would have, would have spotted it or something like that. And there's no Aboriginal stories or anything. And that was half the problem. Everyone else knew it was the most common sundew in southern Australia. It was just the first new sundew with strange tentacles I'd never seen before as I ran from the car on my first, vi uh, my first visit to Canton Swamp. And, uh, yeah, that was, I think that was the problem. People just could not believe that something that was that common could be missed for... 80,000 years, but because the barb or the sting in the tail is on a normal day, you know, WA sort of temperatures, it does move faster than the eye can see, so no one gets to see it. That's that's the ironic thing. Well, it's not moss, it's some other thing that's growing here. But uh, look at that lovely grey soil, and look at the new regrowth on the um, on the eucalypt coming out there. Yeah, packed full of. Uh, no, I think they're phenolic free. I think that's what they say. The ones that come from the base after a bushfire are phenolic free. And they're good for uh, taking uh, cuttings for tissue culture work because they don't have all the phenolics that the mature wood has in them. But uh, doesn't that look like a serene, almost otherworldly, other planet sort of look? Uh, but isn't it just wonderful for CPs? And of course, this season next and probably the one after you'll get, they'll get a sort of boost from this uh, whatever is going on in the soil here. I don't think anyone's quite got a handle on it yet. I mean because once you get a handle on it we can well, we can tweak all the variables and you know it may double the size of the plants with this but with, with a, by tweaking all the variables we might get to three or four times the normal size the normal non-bush fire size of a plant so yeah yeah bring CPs into modern day horticulture, well that's, that's the plan I suppose. Whether it's ever going to happen in my lifetime I don't know, but uh, there's certainly strange things going on in the world of CPs at the moment and have been going for the last decade or so. But here's some more of those uh, trigger plants. The taller the one, there's also that leaven hookier dubia which is, is minute. You might get to see those because they, they uh, do grow down at the other place. Anyway, off to the poly pool, I think. Enough gas bagging for now. As I said, I can't see any obvious pygmy things, and as I said, I, they just stand out to me with all my um, WA skills, you know. 
you see a little red rose there, it just sounds out like anything. I spotted them out the corner of my eyes, sort of thing. But uh, yeah, okay. And geez, having a having a power pole right next to. I don't think I should go too close, just in case. <laughs> you never know. That's almost like that's almost as absurd as having one in that uh, fin bog, you know, having a street lamp in the middle of a swamp. Uh, if you've seen those photographs, but, but I, when I first came to South Australia, and uh, my parents were driving at night time in the up there, up near uh, Mount Beniathan and uh, Mount Lofty between the two. That street lamp was actually operational. I actually got to see that street lamp in operation, and yes, it, it looked very uh, what's it, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. That's the only way I can describe it. That was, it was very Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Uh, what have I done wrong today? Left my yeah, seatbelt out. Okay, over and out.